Hey everyone, welcome to a new series on Banjo-Kazooie for the N64. This is the first of four Banjo-Kazooie games in the main storyline, I guess. Um, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, Banjo-Kazooie Grunty Revenge, and that terrible fourth game that I'm not going to mention because it's that bad. Alright, let's start. Microsoft has had to screw over Banjo-Kazooie. So bad that the people who created the game originally were like, well, we're gonna make a better game. Mm-hmm. We're gonna make ourselves a new game with a with a different two set of animals that no one's ever seen before. I mean, a guana and a bat? Who can think of that? Or actually, it's, it's a chameleon and a bat. And they're actually giving... It's actually kind of cool. Um... So the reason I'm playing this game in particular is pretty much because of ukulele coming out in a couple months, in that April. And I thought, well, I might as well get some, you know, might as well play the old stuff since I can't wait that long to get my hands on a Banjo-Kazooie-like game. The only downside is they haven't announced it for Nintendo Switch, which is kind of interesting, but, I mean... Why wouldn't they have it for Nintendo Switch? It's like the perfect uh, comeback for this game. To go back to the original publisher. But, well, what can you do? Well, actually, yeah. No. Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Anyway. We're going to enjoy this delightful opening where everything has eyes and everything is colorful. Fantastic, everybody. It's fantastic. This game is very, like, nice and simple in, in terms of a storyline. Pretty much, this little girl here gets abducted by a witch. Oh no, spoiler. Alright, you can't speed this part up. Big lazy brother wakes up. We're going on an adventure. I normally would voice act everyone, but the just the the way they did voice acting, even though I wouldn't, it's not really voice acting, but the way they use sound effects to imitate talking actually kind of it's a nice uh, thing they do. Given that voice acting was very data heavy back in the day, they they only had like uh, 16 g megabytes of data. What can they do with that much? Not much. This is a ray a lot. Look at all the graphics and stuff. And they had to be really good about recycling imagery and everything. Like you'll, if you ever played pretty much any game from the N64 earlier eras where they had really heavy restrictions on data. Even GameCube had restrictions, but... You'll notice there's a lot of pattern repeating. Like, they have to, like, constantly... They, they take a small image, and they copy it over and over to fill in space. This game does a good job of hiding it, though. But there's, a, there's some times where it's apparent, like, you know, like, wallpaper or the floor or something. By the way, Banjo is dressed like a 90s douchebag that lives in California. Nice short shorts and a tiger, t tiger sh or a, a shark tooth necklace. They wanted him to look like a cool guy. Which now we'll call an ass. Remember, this game is, what, 98? So, it's almost 25 years old. No. 98. Sorry, 15 years old. Sorry, I can't do math. Actually, next year will be 20, so... If Ukulele waited one year, they would have had a 20-year anniversary sort of deal with it. But I guess they could say that they developed the game for in 97, so... Eh. Also, it's kind of funny when you speed up the dialogue, they sound more squeaky. Anyway, the storyline doesn't really matter. Now, um, this game is a very early on, um, game for the N64, and thank god they let you skip tutorial, because tutorial is such a waste of time. Well, I can't say that. 
tutorial does one thing that people don't expect it to. It actually gives you a full life bar, or a full life unit. So it's kind of worth it to do it. So instead of me having him tutorialize everything, he's like, bruh, 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 this is how you do this move. You already get it. Easy. So pretty much the first thing you can do in this game is go ahead and collect all these little honeycombs. There's six of them in this little area, which is which means you get a full life um, extension out of it. I'm an extra honeycomb. Peace. Collect six of us to increase your energy bar. By the way, the uh, everything has eyes. Everything. I bet you if it wasn't for the graphic limitations, everything would have eyes. It'd be like a bunch of tiny little eyes in the grass and everything. It'd be kind, of, it'd be kind of creepy actually. That's all right. Yep. Got that. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. For some reason, this guy doesn't have eyes. But I guess he's a statue, so his eyes are blended into his body. Let's see. That's three. I think four is right down here. Let's try this. Oh, by the way, swimming is the worst thing in this game. If there's anything I'm going to complain about the most when I play this is me trying to swim for stuff. Even scarier, there's a whole stage where you do mostly swimming, and it is a difficult stage for that. And it's only the third stage! Like, what the hell? It shouldn't be that difficult. Uh, best... I don't think... I think at this point, either if you already played this game and you're watching this for nostalgia's sake, or you never seen it and you never will play it kind of situation. So this is more for me than anyone. But we're good. You know, there we go. We got all six. And now we're getting a little life extension, which is a good way to start the game. Perfect. Six out of mystery. Um, I guess a breakdown of the actual game. It is a collectathon game where you do different puzzles and mini games to get what are called jiggies or jigsaw pieces. And these jigsaw pieces are used to unlock new stages and also let you go to the final boss area. This is one of the games where you can actually skip complete levels and still beat the game. So when people, there are people who speedrun this, they, they tend to skip the very last level because it's just terrible. It's long, because um, if you're a speedrunner, your job is to find the quickest way to do anything. So that means the earlier the earlier stages have quicker jigsaw pieces than the later ones, so your goal is just to finish those really easily. So I think speedrunners usually skip third stage. Well, they don't skip all of it. They get the easy ones. But it's still pretty slow. All oh, right, the plot of this, I, I guess it, I was kind of talking over it, but I'll just say it anyway. Uh, Gruntilda is like, I'm the prettiest one, and then her pot's like, nope, this little girl is. And it's like, no way, I'm the prettiest one. So she steals the girl and says, I'm going to transfer her, her beauty to me, which seems kind of strange. And kind of a nice little Easter egg is if you do game over, they show you what happens with the whole process. They show you her with her... They, they change bodies. Anyway, let's see. I guess we're gonna head up here. Whoa! Fantastic. See, everything has eyes. Alright, let's go ahead to the first stage finally. It only took me 10 minutes. That's pretty good for a game like this. So you'll see that these jigsaw pieces are basically used to unlock worlds. They call them worlds, I call them levels. I should call them worlds because they, they are a, they're like a parallel dimension. And it's really strange because they, they have the same trope as Mario where they have like pictures of the places. But unlike Mario, you actually enter a physical sort of place like that. Also, Gruntilla talks very often, and she talks always in rhymes. Alright, so in the next episode we're going to be doing Mumbo's Mountain, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye!